What's up everybody, Trainer Steve here with seven tips for improved pull-ups. Tip number one, increase that core tension, keep the abdominal plank movement here going. See how his feet are not just dangling loosely, you gotta stay tight through the core. Tip, tip number two from my man Mike McCastle, scapular retraction. If you look at his shoulders, he's gonna be pulling them back as he goes back, retraction, pull. And for tip number three, while we're here, why don't we try some feet assisted pull ups so that we can really focus on retracting and doing the pull of the shoulder there. By the way, Mike McCastle is the world record for pull ups. And he is also my coach. Tip number four, up here, we see the shoulder, we don't want any forward rotation going, otherwise, you're going to get shoulder impingement. Tip number five, we're going to do pull ups with an assisted leg here. A little bit of help so we get more retraction. Tip number six, we're going to work on moving into explosive pulls like so. And tip number seven, let's go for the weighted pull up. With Trainer Steve. Momentum warning. Stick to it with Trainer Steve. Steve, Steve, Steve. Stick to it with Trainer Steve. Habits are cool. The default state is happy. Stick to it with Trainer Steve. Momentum warning. Stick to it with Trainer Steve. Make it your work to play. Steve, Steve, Steve. Steve, 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 Steve. Momentum warning. Stick to it with Trainer Steve. You're experiencing the Momentum Morning. And now, the former hot Cheetos addict turned life enhancement enthusiast, Trainer Steve. Today we have seven tips on how to do pull-ups more effectively as per the request of our member Mike Wassman. That's for you. We're going to give that to you and then we'll be doing the habit roll call right after that. So, and today here is some science you should know about. Science you should know about. All right, and today's science you should know about, we're going to cover seven tips to increase your pull-up game and how to improve it. Tip number one, we want to tighten up the core when we're doing pull-ups. We want to tighten it up and not dangle like a little fishy. If you look at here, you look at his abs along the midline. His core is very tight right there along where his waistline and pant meets because he has a tight core. There's no loose dangling feet. You see his feet are tight. His leg is one long, strong, kinetic chain tip number two we're going to my man mike mccastle the world record holder for pull-ups this is my coach from here in portland i hired him to help me get in better shape for my kettlebell swinging world record tip number two from mike mccastle scapular retraction we're trying to get our scapula retracted what he's showing you here is an assisted way you beat your feet down to the ground there you take your shoulders and what he's talking about is how to retract your shoulders i.e from being in this position to pulling back retracting going into scapular retraction and a little bit of depression you see, you see his shoulders going back first and then down a lot of people just try to jam right down into it and that's what's going to cause us the problem you see he pushes it positions his arm back and then he goes up and here he's showing you an assisted version you could try doing with one leg we also have um my man mark sisson here for tip number three doing the single leg pull up as a little bit of an assist. You try to use your leg as little as possible, but still get the job done. One of the problems we see here is if you're not scapularly retracting and building that strength, that base strength to do it, is your shoulders will internally rotate forward that direction. You can see his shoulders pointing that way. And that's gonna cause a lot of impingement in the shoulder and pain, that's for sure. So for sure, number one, tight core. Number two, scapular retraction. Number three, let's try doing some single leg versions of the pull-up. And also we can do a kneeling version for number four. I forgot to mention that when I was showing you Mike doing his. You can do it from down from the ground here, but you can also go straight from a kneeling position on the floor. Okay, and we're moving on up to number five, maximal meek peak position. Whoops. My apologies, I missed that part. So the maximal position, we're looking for number five, maximal peak. That's holding the weight up there at the top. You'll see what he's at the apex there. If I can get it to stop on time, 
people so fast that it throws me out there. So when you're there, you actually hold the pool and squeeze extra hard for tip number five. Get that maximal peak contraction. You can use an assistance machine to pull you all the way up. You can use banded, uh, assisted bands to pull you up. Or, or you could do it from the ground like we were showing you with Mike. You know, having a bar across the top and then just pull yourself up till you like uh, and squeeze your shoulders across so you have a good spread right here. That's going to be the tip for number five. And then number six, if you've built in the strength to be able to do these, then we suggest adding in explosiveness. See how he's exploding? Pop, pop. Then you can just do as many of those as you can get to without losing your shoulder form and getting that internal rotation. So if we can get maybe five to eight explosive ones, you actually will train your nervous system to be able to handle more load. Then once we've done that, we're going to go to tip number... Oops, I messed up my tip numbers. I apologize. Tip number six, we're going to go to the slow deficit pull. I might have gave you a bonus tip there. So the slow pull here, we're working on your eccentric load ability, your ability to hold and maintain the form on the way down, going slow like that. Again, if they have an assisted pull-up machine at your gym, you could use that as a uh, adjunct to that move, and then you won't have to worry about, oh, man, but I can't even do a pull-up. If you are somebody who is able to pass the test of doing pull-ups without any of assistance, and you've progressed to your hollow rock form, and you have a good breathing and bracing position with scapular retraction and tension, then we suggest you move forward into a weighted pull-up like this right here. This man is hanging weights from his waist. You could also do it uh, with a band system where you have bands hanging around your waist. Either way, our goal is to just dangle something for that extra little bit of a load. Okay, so that's our seven tips for increasing our pull-up game. Number one, tighten up the core. We want to make sure that our core is nice and tight through the midline right here. Two, we have scapular retraction like Mike right here in this video, pulling our shoulders back that way. We want to make sure, see how he just scooped it back there. That's number two. Number three, we can try it from the down low position like this as an assistance tool instead of just doing a dead hang if you're not strong enough to do full-blown pull-ups. Number four, we could progress into a single leg variety like we see here, again, from my man Mike McCastle. Number five, we can do maximal peak positions, jumping up and down, going to the very explosive pull, trying to get to the very top of course, I didn't get to the right spot. There it is, just popping up, trying to pop hard as you can for that explosive strength. And then also moving to deficits, going a little slower on your way down, and then trying out a little bit of a weighted version like we see with this gentleman who's talking too long, uh, like myself. All right, that's our seven tips for increasing your pull-up game. I hope that you found that a little bit useful. I think for the novices and the beginners, we obviously don't have to worry about the weighted version yet, but what we do want to think about when we're working on our pull-up is getting maximal tension through the core and the glutes, getting scapular retraction, not letting your shoulders, especially if you're doing lat pull-downs or pull-ups, not letting your shoulders get too far in front of you because that will cause impingement and pain, meaning let's pull these shoulders back while we're doing our pull-ups, getting that abdominal tension, and looking to play with different types of tempos and speeds like explosive pulls and eccentric slow deficit pull-ups. And those are all great ways to pepper in your routine and try to avoid some undue pain. If you're getting bicep pain when you're doing pull-ups, that also means that your shoulders are internally rotating too far over the bar as you're doing the pull-up and that we need to maintain a better retraction like we showed you with the Mike McCastle video. Okay, that's today's pull-ups. Uh, explanation. We're going to move on in to the habit roll call. It looks like Miss Evelyn is here live checking in with us already. Wonderful. Say hi to us if you uh, are here peeking and watching. Comment below saying good morning. Just letting me know that we have some support here. Okay, we're going to move on over to your roll call. Let's get it. The world famous habit roll call. Shazam! I'm here, baby. Sticking to it. We're getting it. I gotta fix my lighting system with this green screen. I apologize for these poor little quality dots. We need a more professional production here. Okay, yesterday's habit roll call check-in 
We are here with Evelyn. Good morning. Got my stretches in, kettlebell swings, clean and lifts, hip exercises done. This morning I was able to run in place, counted to 100. Do you know how long it's been since I was able to do that? My hip is feeling at 100. That makes me feel so happy. Ugh. I love it. I love it. I love that you're feeling better, Miss Evelyn. That makes me happy too because we don't like it when we don't feel good when we walk. Tracy Warner Hawkman. I think this is day nine for me. Not sure. Walking 30 minutes has become a part of my life. Boom. One up life for you. That's what this is. Miss Tracy, this is a one up mushroom and we're giving you one more life. Just something I do to feel less stressed and at peace. Eating habits have improved. I'm just feeling healthier and happy with myself. I've learned in the past nine days that I'm stronger than I can give myself credit for. Ugh. What a beautiful thing, Tracy. I absolutely love this. Um, Thank you so much for staying here with us. And thank you, Samantha White, for bringing her in. You guys are doing a phenomenal job together, and we really appreciate it. Tracy, uh, just a little pointer. Here's something I do when I go on my walks that I found even more helpful. uh, Is When I go on walks, I challenge myself to every once in a while listen to a nonfiction audiobook related to diet health or fitness or happiness but usually if it if it's diet that is my focus i'm trying to keep my mind thinking about those things so i will listen to audiobooks not with the intent of per se copying that exact program and doing it but more so with the intent of just keeping my mind aware that it's important to me when i'm listening to audiobooks that are about food and diet i tend to eat better when i listen to audiobooks about comedy i tend to say funnier jokes Um, I think that that's just maintaining the mindset in your head and anchoring to that thing throughout the day in your subconscious. And so listening to audiobooks on walks can be a phenomenal way to do that. Mike Wassman, day 77 of meditation and day one of a five-minute chest workout. Trina Steve, you think it's okay to work my chest every day for 20 days in a row? That's my new goal, I think. Mr. Mike Wassman, uh let me take away i'm not going to give you a life for this one you're my homeboy so i can be very blunt and honest with you um yesterday you wrote down day one you know okay two days ago we were talking about back problems and then yesterday uh we were talking about doing the Stuart mcgill big three as sort of a habit and i noticed you did the mcgill big three one time as a check-in and then i don't see it here again so that looks like it was something you wanted to maintain as a habit for some reason but now it's not here. So, and now you're choosing a chest thing. And again, because everybody here who's watching Mike is a friend of mine. We've been hanging out a lot in the past. We know each other really well. I'm being candid with him, okay? Um, and so his goal here, let's talk about being a bro, Mike. <laughs> what do we really want to work out our chest for every day? Uh, do you really just want a bigger, burlier chest to be jacked or do you want it for your health, right? We've been talking about how your back has been bothering you a lot. So I think, you know, it's in your best interest to really work on your back. And so that's why the Stuart McGill Big Three, I think, which you agreed upon yesterday, was going to be the habit. So I think we should probably stick with the McGill Big Three and work on that for 21 days in a row to see if your back feels stronger and your core feels stronger. Also, make sure you're watching this video today. I made this pull-up video just for you, Mr. Mike. Evelyn Price from yesterday also. Eight days, no sugar, over six grams. Wonderful. We're kicking sugar, baby. I love it. Mr. Baron Adams, back at it today. The long weekend was nice, but ready to get back to our habits. He got his 10 squats in yesterday, and I'm looking for his check-in now. Where are you, Mr. Baron? Samantha White didn't do a full workout today. I still got up and moved. Today seemed like an odd day. I woke up late as hell. Forgot to do many things. My mind just seems out of whack. Hopefully, I'll be in a better mindset tomorrow. Well, thank you for checking in. Also, I'd love to get into strength training. Where to start? I have weights in my room. Last time I touched them, I wasn't paying attention. I hit my toes off and broke three toes. Oh, my goodness. We do not want to be breaking toesies. That's not good. That hurts so bad. When you get older, you start stubbing toes. I don't know why when you're a kid, it doesn't hurt. Trisha Boyd day 15 yesterday was one of those days that nothing went as planned to look at that samantha i think you samantha and patricia you guys are on the same <laughs> wavelength right now also yesterday the world was on fire so i think maybe it just was an off day for a lot of people day 15 yesterday was one of those days nothing went as planned woke up late and then worked late too late to go to the gym did however get my three times my move goal in at work back at the gym this morning protein 87 all right trisha good job keeping up that protein let's see if we can make it to 100 boom all right everybody that's today's roll call check-in 
We are looking for our live check-in from a couple of people here, hoping to say good morning to you and keep you checked in on your goals. Evelyn checked in live with us, saying she's counting up her running in place steps to 105, feeling energized without hip pain. So that we love thank you miss evelyn for being here for that one that is today's momentous momentum morning time for me to go get my squats in and then go get with my clients if you have any other questions or requests for videos please leave them here in the comments section below and we will feel free to answer all of that for you all right everybody oh there's baron's check-in at the last second oh there's brandy checking in at the last second thank you everybody for giving me these check-ins and letting me know you're here with me and that i'm not talking to myself uh, Baron came in with his eating as a 9 out of 10 and we're at weight at 201, so we're staying steady on our weight. Loving it. Thank you, everybody. Good morning, Miss Brandy, to you catching the live. If you want to learn how to get your pull-up game going, Miss Brandy, it may seem an, impossible to do pull-ups, but believe it or not, you can build yourself into doing them too. And the way we do that is by starting small, like off the ground we showed in the video. Everybody, stick to it to get to it. I'm Trainer Steve. I'm out.